Praise the Lord. Welcome to Africa Mega Grace Center. Amen. Thank you guys once again for being here present Amen. with us. Amen. And those on Facebook and YouTube, God bless you. Yes. Thank you for listening in. Uh -huh. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh -huh. Amen. Like, hit that like button yes. and send us a message every now and then. Tell us about what you heard. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're still talking about knowing God. Yes. And this is a subject that God has mm -hmm. brought back up. Uh -huh. uh, he gave it to me uh, shortly after we start the ministry. Yes. And I noticed that God began to just dump certain things in my spirit to talk about yes. as the beginning of a ministry. And salvation was one of them. Yes. And a big part of it was knowing God, being on this road to maturity. Because once we come to Jesus, we have to get on that road to maturity. We have to find ourselves doing the things necessary to grow. Uh, the Bible says, have ever increasing faith. And hey man, we got another preacher going. They ain't calling for the bottle. I need to get my back up preacher there a big bottle of milk. Hey man, so she can go ahead and come down. And praise God. But God has given grace, hey amen, to be able to cover those subjects that he has hey amen released. He released them in the season that we need them. And he's brought back, hey amen, to light knowing God, because we have to know God. That's one of the things that those that continue in the negative was told away from me, I never knew you. And amen, one of the things that we need to be able to do is to know him. Because we want him to know us. And we want to walk up there and begin to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Because this is what God has for those that will continue to be faithful. Mm -hmm. And all too often the Bible says, if you hold fast to faith, amen, that you began with until the end. If you'll be steadfast and unmovable, amen, until the end. And Paul said, I began, a, he said, I, be, I, I fought a good fight and I finished my course. Amen, and that you kept the faith. And these are things that's absolutely required for us to be able to keep the faith. So in order to keep the faith, hey amen, we got to know God because his word is required. It's required to be in our hearts and in our minds continuously. Hey amen, we thank God for the opportunity to, hey amen, have a sanctuary. Yes. And to be able to share his word and to see how he moves. Amen. When you say yes, Lord, and go ahead and do what he called you to do. Amen. There's things that you'll never find out until you step up to the plate. You, you, you think about them. You go, you give you a few things about what could potentially happen uh, when you step up to the plate. But there's certain things you would never know mm -hmm. until you get to that place. And there's certain things you'll never know, amen, until certain people come into the sanctuary and be a part of what you're doing. One of the things God wants us to know is how to love his people. Amen. And be patient and loving and kind in the midst of all things uh, that's going on. And he said you would know them, amen, by their fruit, which is the same as you would know them by their behavior. Love and peace and joy and kindness and meekness and goodness and long-suffering. And these are a type of behavior that we, we all wanted to partake of. And, and amen, we get these things going as we get to know God. It's a, these fruits of the Spirit. Amen, we're going to pick it up here in, in Philippians chapter 3. And we'll just keep on taking off. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, we'll begin there again. And I'm going to pick it up in verse, amen, 7. And we'll go from there. But what things were gained to me, Philippians chapter 3, verse 7, those I counted lost for Christ. And we see here that the Apostle Paul, writing this letter to the Philippians, he wants them to understand, and all that will read after the letter went forth, as we are reading it today, there's things that need to be given up. The Bible says, love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. And these things that has the ability to become idols. 
We can be addicted to things. The Bible tells us what chokes the word out is the cares of this world. These cares fall in that category. The things that we, we place before us, it's I got to do this all the time. And these things can, can have us standing there and wasting much time, whatever it be. Amen. So these things we have to back up from. Because in this world today, there's many, many things that is hindering the body of Christ. We've seen that many things over the years, many, many years, have creeped. they've been allowed to creep into the church. And now it's beginning to spring forth and cause leaders, bishops, amen, pastors to make decisions that is not in keeping uh, with the things of God. We begin to vote for someone that is supporting wickedness and pushing forth wickedness. Someone that will go to another country and tell them they will support wickedness. They will support abomination. And if they don't, then we won't, we won't support you. We're going to sanction you. We're going to quit giving you our products. And we're going to quit selling things to you to help your nation become prosperous. Because you won't support abominations. That's a lot of audacity. That's a lot of wickedness. That's the same as being evangelist for Satan and going to other countries and sharing the wickedness, the words of wickedness. Amen. This is this is a huge thing that many is clearly today not paying attention to. That's we hear many bishops and many pastors are siding with those that will support wickedness. When we look at these the Masonic Order, we look at these sororities and fraternities. And we see that these guys are bound down at an altar. And God is saying, don't mix, amen, with those guys that's doing these things. And we saw that many kings in the Old Testament, they went forth. And they done exactly what the people of the land was doing. The, the, the Hevites. The, the Parasites. These Hittites, they begin to do like them. They begin to bow down at altars and bow down to these idols. And that's what's happening in so many ways. And Jesus tells us, in the end, be not deceived. Because what Satan is doing is getting people, amen, to do the exact same thing, but unknowingly. Joining these groups. They're being pulled forth with these benefits. Verse 8, ye doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I might win Christ. Paul is making it clear to us that we have to look upon things, uh, nice cars, uh, nice houses, uh, furniture, these things that we, we, we're happy about. Sometimes our jobs and the prestige we get from our jobs and being in positions and the good books of men and these kind of things. We can we have to look at it as though it's secondary to Christ. All things have to be secondary. All things have to be second to our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Or they can get us off track. So Paul is making it clear here that he suffered the loss of all things. As the disciples told Jesus even, Lord, we've given up everything for you. Mm -hmm. And Jesus began to tell them, well, you're going to have a place with me in the kingdom. You'll be among the 24, even as the, uh, the patriarchs, Jacob's sons. They, they, they'll be the ones up there, the 24, in heaven, doing the judging. They gave up everything for Christ. And we have to have this heart, being willing to not put our heart into anything. We, we talked about uh, my testimony of the car that I had and how the windshield had cracked because of a little pebble. And God began to sh tell me that, look, if you put your heart in it, when it get damaged, your heart will be damaged. We can't get our hearts into things. Verse 9, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, the righteousness, which is of God by faith. 
We got to keep the faith until the end. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings and being made conformable unto his death. He wants us to know him. Paul's expression, there's a need to know God. And in order to do that, we got to spend time with him. He tells us to get our minds transformed. Be not conformed to this world, which is a natural tendency to look out at what's going on in the world. And we look at YouTube and things, we see many things happening in the church. It's a new whirlwind today. We get to look and see what's happening in churches all over the world. Uh-huh. You go back ten years ago, we weren't able to do that. As we weren't able to do that. And nowadays, we can see what's happening. We got news from all kinds of sources. And we found that, amen, there was one gentleman, a rapper who was uh, became a billionaire. And he had these parties. Yeah. And we found that there's many wicked, there was many wicked things going on in those parties, amen, and many people was involved with those things, those abominations that was going on homosexual things and lesbian things and this sexual wickedness of all sorts going on in those parties and now we find that there was 38 pastors mm. that was also engaged in that names have not been given up yet but they will be there's one that's been out and about and we heard about them but I mean there's a lot going on in the world but when we hear 38, 38 pastors has been involved in this wickedness uh, that's that's something that con that's a concern. It's a major red flag. Yeah, concerning the things that's going on in the church, and then you got pastors, amen. Multi, I mean, mega churches, pastors coming up with a syrup bottle and pouring out syrup on everything up front and making that an example, of something to preach upon. Sir, and you got you got you got homosexual guys call themselves a bishop and pastors, you know, first men in the churches. And they are degrading and defiling the house of God. And one of the things that God wants us to be able to do as ministers is to differentiate, to help the people understand the difference between clean and unclean. To help the people understand the difference, amen, between that which is holy and that which is profane. He wants us to teach the difference. So in order to do that, we got to find ourselves walking a life that is holy. God said, be thou holy, amen, and walk before me. Be thou perfect, and walk before me. And Satan is barely trying to get the house of God to believe that it's not required. There's no requirement to be holy. Amen, holiness is something that we have to look at and say, okay, let me get in the mirror here before I go to church and make sure my appearance is, amen, in a holy manner. Make sure my, from my head, make sure my, even my hair cut. Amen. It's in keeping with profession. Now on the job, we got to be professional. Now how are we going to be more professional on the job than we are in the church? What's wrong with that picture? We want to make sure we're looking right. I mean, you ain't going to come, amen, to work looking any kind of way. It's a dress code. And then you have to be in keeping with that dress code or you'll be sent home. And then you come to church and you're not in keeping with the dress code of the church. You're not in keeping with the morals and values of the church. You got the audacity to get out of two when you get told, hey man, to go home and change? Uh, just just go. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. We got men, hey man, coming into church today with, with dresses on, mm -hmm. lipstick, mm -hmm. and have the audacity to get out of two when you say, hey, you know what? You can't come in here looking like that. You need to go. Uh -huh. Come back. We, we don't do that here. You come up and get delivered from that sexual and homosexual demon. Hey man, you can come back uh, when you get delivered. Hey Amen. You're not coming to get delivered. You ain't got no business in church anyway. The defiled the profane do not belong in church unless they come to get free. That's right. And they have received, amen, conviction from God. And they, they come in and say, yes, Lord. Yes. And they're willing to get instructions, amen, from the podium, from the pulpit, and learn what's needed and begin to do these things. I mean, we can't have uh, profane people, I mean, in the church thinking it's okay. One of the purposes of preaching, amen, is to get everybody in line with the morals and values, amen, of the Bible. 
Did every church have their rules? And these are things you got to look out for today. And we can't just leave things unchecked. We got to get it, get get people scored away, help them understand. Hey, this is how things go. Because a lot of people just simply don't know. Many do and don't care. But some people just don't know. Amen. So we work with them. Amen. This is a a big mess that church is in today. The church is in a major mess today. And we have to be prepared to deal with that according to the Spirit of God. Amen. Being willing to correct. And one of the things we are called to do is to edify, exalt, and comfort, to correct, and to reprove. Help the people of God understand what's required of them. Amen. And there's pastors teaching that, amen, there's no need to tell folk what's wrong. And the Bible says correct. And that's the big part of correcting is helping others to understand this is right and this is wrong. A word said in the Bible. Okay, we're going to come back and, and, and get you that word. Amen. Some things you got to understand, as Paul said, I have not been taught it of man, nor have I heard it, amen, from man, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. God reveals things. There's things that you won't find in the Bible. You may feel convicted about it. You may feel like, oh, you know what? I'm not sure if this is right. Amen. But when a revelation comes forth by Jesus Christ, when you hear it, you got to move on it. If you if you if you got to check in your spirit and you say, maybe that's wrong, maybe that's wrong, guess what? It's wrong. Don't play with it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it. Amen. Right away. Fight it out. Sometimes it takes a minute when you realize a bad habit is wrong. You got to fight with it. Begin to come against it. Speak against it. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Demons are subtle. Sin is deceitful. And that's, that's the way it works. We've got to speak to it and command it to go right. in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to be clean. We want to be pure. We want to walk faithful before God. And what God does as we continue to pray and continue to lift up our holy hands, amen, and give him praise, amen. he'll release revelation concerning things. And help us understand, okay, it's another step I need you to take here. Mm -hmm. Something else I need you to drop off. Drop it off at the altar. That's right. Amen. And believe God for the next level. But God will help me understand, amen, that there's different levels in this faith. Mm -hmm. And those on level two, uh, when they begin to hear things about level three, they scratch their head. Uh -huh. I don't know. You know, you, 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 like we is on this earth right now. We are acquainted with the things of the world. Yeah. To where, okay, I gotta, I gotta stop being so concerned about this thing. Mm -hmm. I love that car, man. I gotta make sure it's shining. Yes. I love my house. I gotta make sure it's clean. I gotta get my vacuum out every day mm -hmm. and shine this thing up, man. Uh huh. I my you know, kids dropping toys here and there. Uh -huh. Get that off the floor. Straighten that up. <laughs> hey, man. And here we are, yep. so concerned about these things. We used to that. Yeah. That's but God right. wants us to not as to not be as concerned. Yeah. Amen. We can keep things in order. Yeah. Amen. Without going overboard. Yeah, exactly. We can keep things in order without going overboard. That's right. Mm -hmm. We get over concerned about our money mm -hmm. and these things. But God is able to show us the things that we need to know. Amen. And if Thank He's dealing with you on that, let God deal with you on that. Yes. Uh -huh. It could be our job, anything. Amen. We, I mean, some people they never our work. They go work for eight hours. Yeah. And then they go home and work for another eight hours. Yeah. They be sitting on the couch watching TV, but they really work. They're not really there. They're virtual reality. <laughs> I mean, they Praise God. They're yeah. still doing this. Why are they watching TV? <laughs> hey, you, you're not work no more. What's up? <laughs> These are things that we need to look at yeah. and consider. I mean, I, people like that. They just love. Not that they always don't love their job. It's not that they always love their job. Yeah. They may have a pressing appointment coming the next day, and they just can't get, they, they got a perfectionist going on thing going on, and they can't leave it alone. That's true. I got to make sure this thing is right. Well, you don't want to spend so much time on it, and then it's going to happen. Yeah. You make a mistake, guess what? Learn from it and do better next time. Uh -huh. Don't hurt yourself. I mean, don't, don't go in the mirror and say, woulda, coulda, shoulda, yeah. and beat yourself up. Yeah. It happens all the time. Mm -hmm. 
So what we need to do, amen, is just stay before God and let him deal with us on these things, amen, that we need to get better at. Mm -hmm. But the church is a mess. Oh, yeah. uh, all over the place. Oh, yeah. It's not just America. Mm -hmm. It's all over the world. It's that time of the year. It's that season. Mm -hmm. uh, first day I woke up this morning, she was going over the Bible, and she looked at um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Mm -hmm. And I woke, when I, I woke up, and the first thing came to my mind, amen, was the great falling away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of the Lord began to deal, you know, take a look at that. Can you do it? Take a look at that. I said, oh, wait a minute, where's that at? Mm -hmm. So I took Google and looked it up. It was in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's take a moment and look at that. Yes. Because this is something that's happening here mm -hmm. uh, that we need to be aware of in the world today. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure we're not among those 2 Thessalonians. Amen. Chapter 2. Yes. yes. Now read one through three, then I'll go down and look at some, some different portions of it. Amen. We want to make sure we're not among those that have the head in the sand. Yes, right. Because many people today are going to church yeah. uh, Sunday in and Wednesday out, but not really paying attention to what's happening. Yes. Mm -hmm. We are to redeem the time and be aware of what's going on. Amen. Uh -huh. If something happened, we'll be like, whoa, I'm not even prepared. That's right. Those ten virgins. Mm -hmm. Five wives and five foolish. Mm -hmm. And the foolish ones, they were paying attention. Yes. They didn't know what time it was, what's going on. They made no preparation. Because mm -hmm. if you're not paying attention to what's going on in the world, you're not going to prepare what is to come. Mm -hmm. You're not going to prepare for it at all. Mm -hmm. You might need to save up some things in your cabin. Yes. In case you know, there's an EMP go off in this country yes. and you got no electricity for a whole month That's right. or a whole three months. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about that. Things can happen suddenly. Be prepared. That's right. We can't be a foolish, amen, virgin. We gotta be a wise. That's right. Amen. Man and woman of God. Mm -hmm. Be prepared for everything, every possibility everything. that you can afford, you prepare yourself yes. for. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and by our gathering together unto him that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. And Jesus wants us to be ready today. He wants us to be prepared, amen, to make it on in the glory. And that's a question to ask today. Are you ready for heaven? Or are you ready for hell? Because there's one or the other ready for you. And depending on how we live on this earth. And there's no wham bam, I'm going to heaven kind of thing going on here. You mean you believe God? Now you gotta act like you believe God. You believe God, don't act like you believe God. You don't really believe God. The Bible says you deceive in your own self. And faith without works is dead. Verse 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or in or by or be troubled, yeah. neither by spirit nor by word. Nor by word. Nor by word. There's a lot of words going on after the day. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was sitting and I was listening to one of the bishops mm -hmm. as I flipped through to hear what, what these bishops, what these people talking about after the day. Mm -hmm. And this guy said that uh, that Satan and the demons are still in heaven. Now, if that wasn't enough, now, I said, okay, let me think on that a minute. Because mm -hmm. I did hear a seer, a man of God, who said that the demons are in the second heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay, let, let me work with that. Put them two together and think on that a minute. Mm -hmm. And then he went on to say that there's no demon on this earth. <laughs> and then I, I got I went to, went to put, some, put some, some thinking into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And look at the word here. Amen. The Bible says that when Jesus came upon this man that had this legion in him, mm -hmm. um, Amen. Mm -hmm. he uh, began to speak back to Jesus and said, yes, we're, we're legion. We're many. Mm -hmm. One man. Mm -hmm. 2,000 to 6,000 demons mm -hmm. in him. Wow. And guess where he was? On earth. That's right. 
So they kind of debunked that right away. Amen. And Jesus began to talk about uh, demons throughout the Bible. Mm -hmm. But also, amen, mm -hmm. he said that we'll cast them out. That's those right. that has, amen, faith in him. Amen. These signs should follow those that believe. And one of those signs, mm -hmm. amen, was that you should cast out devils. Uh -huh. Cast them out of what? Cast them out of people who are where? Mm -hmm. On this earth. That's right. So yes, demons on the earth and then people. Mm -hmm. And these are things that we have to be able to discern yeah. if God gives us the ability to do so. Amen. amen and deal with these things. So I'm sitting there listening to this guy, and I'm thinking, why would he begin to talk about that? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And then I look a little farther, and I find that this guy is a part of some capital Phi Psi capital or something other. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to look a little deeper at things, okay? Mm -hmm. Why are you talking about things that you're not familiar with? Exactly. Only someone who's not familiar with demons will make a comment like that. And that's why it's important also to be to have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and then at some point connected to you as a ministry. Because we need all these abilities and gifts working and available for us, amen, to go in and glean up for, amen, in time and season as God provides. Because you got seers that's able to see the spirit realm and to see demons right where they are. That's right. I've seen many demons in my, in my walk. In people, out of people. Yes. Coming out of people, going back into people. Yes. Uh -huh. All these things. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. God reveals these things. But it's important to not just understand that somebody's talking stuff they're not familiar with, but also to understand that they are speaking things and they're speaking them for a certain reason. And they're believing what they're saying. It's kind of serious. I mean, very serious. And he, I mean, he was like, ain't no demons on this earth. Let me explain you what a demon is. And he clearly didn't know. But he's bishop. Yeah. Bishop means you got you got more than one church connected to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. From what I understand, you got to have at least two. Mm -hmm. One you, you pastor in, and another one, at least one more. Yes. But there's many bishops and got they got many, many churches under them. And some of them bishops was in was in there in there with their rapper. Uh, doing the parties with the sexual wickedness. I believe they call them pre calls? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. As many, many of them 38 pastors was bishops in there also. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. That's right. People preach real good today, tap yeah. dance. And I'm like, wait a minute, doctor. You preaching real good. You got a voice for ministry. Mm -hmm. But you wearing that you wearing that fraternity jacket there. Yeah. That means you bowed down at an altar and you made a vow to a false god. That's right. At some point in your walk, it also means that you get together on Saturdays here and there, and you commune, amen, with the ungodly. When the Bible says light and darkness, that's no communion. Come on now. That's right. All right. We got to look a little deeper sometimes. It's okay. What's going? On? What's really going on here? Yeah. And Satan is able to creep into the church because people are able to do church well. And perform miracles as first faith read this morning. Mm -hmm. So much so that it was possible, if it was possible, even the very elect yes. would be deceived. Yes. That's right, amen. I mean at one point I was noticing how people love the prophetic word. Mm -hmm. Love the prophetic word. Oh, yeah. it, it appeared that people just okay. Prophetic word, prophetic word, prophetic word. The Bible is a more sure word of prophecy. What we need today more than anything, amen, is knowledge. Right. Because for that reason, that lack thereof, the people perish. They didn't perish because they wouldn't get enough prophetic words. They perish because they didn't have the knowledge of God's truth. And that's what we need. We want to make sure we first are secure in making it to heaven. Yes. We'll take the prophetic words. We'll take the healing. Yes. And we'll take all those spiritual gifts that come with it. We'll be well equipped with everything. Well, let's get our priorities straight. That's right. Number one priority is being able to obey God. Uh -huh. And the only way to do that is to hide the word, amen, in our hearts. So let's make sure we do that. Amen. I, 
the things that I'm hearing today just blowing me away. And I was listening to this one guy for a minute. I saw him out there on YouTube, and I saw that he was a homosexual. There was two of them. They began to talk about a man, Ruth, Naomi, and uh, they want to try to twist it to, to meet their homosexual need. Yeah. Their, 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 their deceitfulness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Had to cut them on off right quick. That's right. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to, to see what kind of things these folks are doing and saying. Uh -huh. And if you're not paying attention to the word today, if it was possible, you will be deceived. Yeah. Right. Hearing this foolishness, absolute foolishness. I mean, you gotta be careful who you, amen, listen to today. Exactly. Make sure they are actually qualified and, and make sure they love God. Because you can't be in no inequity, amen, and be behind the podium, amen, sharing the word, because you're gonna make you're gonna not be able to understand some things for real. That's right. It's very important mm -hmm. that we notice these things. Pay attention to what's going on. This I have never all my days seen things so wicked. Now, social media helps us to see it. Yes. It wasn't always around, so we, we weren't sure. Mm -hmm. But we know that these wicked things was always happening, but it appeared it was happening on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. But when the king began to say, don't ask, don't tell, it's gone away, that opened up a Pandora's box mm -hmm. for many demonic spirits to go forth. Yes. And many laws began to be passed, amen, mm -hmm. to make the land exceedingly wicked. <coughs> to make the land exceedingly wicked. Amen. Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a what? A falling away first. And there is a falling away right now. There's no doubt in my mind that there's a falling away right now. And the Bible says the church must first be judged. And there's no doubt in my mind that the church is absolutely being judged. Many pastors are being exposed, bishops are being exposed, raping the little boys in church, molesting the children, cheating on their spouses, becoming homosexuals after, being, after preaching for 20, 30, 40 years. And then got the audacity to get an attitude when the folks say you got to go away because what you're doing is not in keeping with the morals and values Amen. of the church. That's right. Uh -huh. I thought they wouldn't mind. They ain't got to explain nothing to nobody. Mm -hmm. The devil's a lie. You got to explain that. That's right. And then you need to hit the door. Yeah. Show it there. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Amen. It is what it is. Yes. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except to be a falling away first. And that man of sin is revealed. So it appears that the way things are going right now, the Antichrist, that man of sin is not too far off. He'll be showing up on the scene for many, many years, before long. The son of perdition. So we need to keep our eyes open and pay attention. Right. There's only so much we can control. We can pray. We can keep ourselves keep ourselves out of harm's way. Yes. Amen. To the best of our ability. Amen. We want to stay in the word and come against the devil and practice our weaponry. Yes. Because believe me, we're going to need it. Mm -hmm. Deliverance is going to be a ministry that's going to be not only in need, it's going to be required throughout the world. Mm -hmm. We're going to need to be armed, amen, to deal with devils amen. on a regular basis. People are going to come in, and they're going to be practically manifesting the moment they walk in the door. Oh, yeah. We said, are you okay? Are you okay? We're going to know right away. No, you're not okay. Amen. Let's go ahead and get some oil on this other here. Exactly. Let's begin to pray for him. We're going to need teams of people that can, amen, work with folks. Amen. It's full of devils. Things are changing. It's going to be necessary. To command that. We need to practice that. Command up, whatever it means. Command it to go. We talked about having pain in our finger. 
Command that little thing to come off your finger. Mm -hmm. Something simple as that. Yeah. That's practice. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. Right. You know, some, some important look. It shows called like supernatural. Uh -huh. It's supernatural. You you you, you hear the, you hear from people uh -huh. that have been dealing with these things on a regular basis. Yeah. And they tell you, mm -hmm. God's revealed in a dream, in a vision. That that's a little devil on your hand causing you pain, that's spirit right. of pain. Uh -huh. And you speak to it, command yeah. to go. We need to practice that. And we if we still in unbelief concerning these things, yes. and we might have some struggles down the road. Mm -hmm. We gotta get on board quick. Mm -hmm. We get to deal with these things and practice these things on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Because it's gonna become obvious pretty soon at the rate we're going, the rate things are happening in the world today. Oh yeah. Let's take a look at verse 7 here. For the mystery of inequity does already work. Only he who now let us will let until he be taken out of the way. Now, I had a friend of mine many years ago. He told me God showed me in a dream that he had, he was up. It appeared that when, you, when you're looking down and seeing things happening, you might be seeing things while you're in heaven, even in your dream. But God is showing you, hey, this is what's going on. This is what's going to be going on in years to come. Hey, man, he, uh, he said that he saw a guy just brush across another guy. Mm -hmm. And the guy just turned around and killed him. And he began to realize that's how evil things are going to be, yes. hey, amen, when God pulled his spirit wow. yeah. out of the earth. That's how bad wickedness is going to be. Oh, yeah. We have to prepare ourselves. Okay. And we got to really take to heart yes. when the Bible says meditate in the word day and night. Mm -hmm. uh, morning, noon, and night I cry unto the Lord. Yes. I need to hear my voice. Mm -hmm. And begin to take these things to heart. Take them serious. People stay at home like it's no big deal. Uh, from church. Not understanding what's really going on, and if you don't know, you don't know. Yes. But things are winding down. Oh yeah, they really are. We got to be able, Amen, to kneel down before God on a regular basis and be prepared, Amen, to grow, to grow and grow, and be ready for the Master's use. Verse eight, and then shall that wicked it be revealed. Whom the Lord shall consume mm -hmm. with the spirit of his mouth, yes. and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan mm -hmm. with all power, with all power and signs and lying wonders, yes. and with all deceitfulness, mm -hmm. deceitful boldness mm -hmm. of unrighteousness in that parish, in them that perish. Mm -hmm. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Mm -hmm. There's a high level of wickedness that's coming. Oh, yeah. A very high level. Oh, yeah. And it begins at the top. Mm -hmm. If our president is allowing wickedness to excel and supporting wickedness in such a way where if you can't say nothing about this wickedness, if you don't go along with this wickedness to such a degree, you'll be called out. And amen, you lose your job and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Talking about losing your 501c3 and yes. all this kind of stuff. If you don't go along with the sexual wickedness. And I mean, Bishop's talking about how even in the midst mm -hmm. of this certain group, yeah. amen, most of them are going along with and supporting sexual wickedness. Mm -hmm. And because he's not, uh -huh. they basically ready to throw him out. In fact, yeah. I mean, they was trying to, amen, get the bank to close on his loan and cause him to lose his building. Yes. Mm -hmm. 30 of them in his organization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bishops and pastors. Because they want to go along with sexual, this sexual wickedness. And he said, no, it's not a keeper with the morals and virus of, of the Bible. That's right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Amen. He's saying he stood for righteousness. Mm -hmm. One among 31. Mm -hmm. That's bad. This organization, mm -hmm. you look at them, they're doing church well. They got many, I mean, intellectuals mm -hmm. that, that thrive on getting degrees and things, and, and ain't no wrong with getting degrees. Yeah. Mm 
But when you begin to say that you got to have a, a, a degree in theology in order to preach the word, mm -hmm. now we got to press the button here, we got a problem. Got a problem. Okay, that's a problem right there. Amen. That's right. When Jesus went to, to get those to follow him. Yes. They said it was unlearned men. That's right. They said he, uh, mm -hmm. the Pharisees looked upon them mm -hmm. and they marveled that they was unlearned men. They mm -hmm. weren't like Paul. Yes. But they didn't have degrees in theology. But there was men that had degrees in the Holy Ghost. They had degrees in the power of God. Yeah. They had degrees in the anointing. Yeah. I mean, that above a doctor's degree mm -hmm. in the power and anointing of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. They had revelation. They had, a, yes. amen, two master's degrees, two doctor's degrees, mm -hmm. amen, in the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because that's where it's at. That's right. We want to be able to hear from heaven in such a way yes. where we do God's will uh -huh. without worrying about paper. Yes. That's it's just right. a piece of paper, most of which, amen, you're going to forget anyway once you finish school. Exactly. You go to school, and they may have stuff you learn you don't never use in your life. That's right. I'm talking about the college level. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got a class in economics. That's one of my requirements. Mm -hmm. I got to take economics one and two. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm not going to be a, a professor in, in, in economics. That's right. Amen. Okay, it was good knowledge and good stuff to be aware of mm -hmm. and help me understand some things. Yes. Amen. But uh, some of that stuff, it just went shoo. Uh -huh. And I got A's in it. Yeah. The bees. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I remember it when I need to to match that test. But now, get it out of here. I got to go and live. That's what's important. Amen. I got to hear from heaven yeah. and do what God said. Uh -huh. Come on now. Amen. Degrees are good, though. We need them. Because yeah. they get you and they open up doors. Uh -huh. When you start having meetings saying, okay, and, and, and going off. Amen. That people who ain't got degrees. Everybody want to start a church now. No degree, no nothing. Okay. Uh, when did the Bible say you need a degree? Exactly. There's a lot of things going on. Mm -hmm. The intellectuals are coming together and saying all kind of stuff. And they mean the main one, say man on Saturday night, getting with the ungodly. Amen. Passing That's women around. Uh-huh. Going from man to man in the building. Yeah. yeah. The main ones. Yeah. Can't stay married. All kind of problems. Mm -hmm. And for this cause, uh -huh. amen, mm -hmm. God shall send them strong delusions mm -hmm. that they should believe a lie. Yes. That they all might be damned mm -hmm. who believe not the truth, but as pleasure in unrighteousness. Yeah. Jesus made it very plain in John chapter 3 mm -hmm. that he didn't come to condemn the world. Right. But that the world through him might be saved. Mm -hmm. But he said those that don't believe in him yeah. they're condemned already. Amen. Because they don't believe yes. in the only begotten Son. Mm -hmm. We've got to believe Jesus. That's right. And we've got to get in the word and do the things required of us. Yes. We've got to do some things. You got to learn how to bear the peaceful fruits of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Amen. To bear the fruits of the Spirit. Yes. That's what He wants for us. Yes. Amen. We can preach and teach all day long. Mm -hmm. but if we're not bearing the fruit, we're in trouble. That's right. Because many are preaching. Mm -hmm. Then they're on the news. Oh, yeah. The women coming in with their better stuff out saying, Oh, Pastor, this is your, this your kid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the wife, they boxing, they boxing like that, amen. Ali and Spinks up in there. <laughs> they gotta pull them apart. Right in church, on YouTube. That's, that's the thing about YouTube. It'll show you all the matches in church. Everybody who, I mean, who, who got a good right jab, they'll show them. <laughs> they got a good left hook, they'll be in there punching. Oh yeah. Be like, oh, what's going on there? Like I say, the guy with the shirt, all over, just pouring it out. Got a trampoline in the middle of the church, jumping up and down. And that's one of his, uh, you call it on his uh, points of reference to teach about on a trampoline jumping up and down. Mm -hmm. yes. It's just a little piece of it. There's a lot of other crazy stuff going on. Mm -hmm. I mean crazy. Yes. On a capital C. Oh, yeah. Verse 12. That they all might be damned mm -hmm. 
who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And we believe in God. We're praying for these guys now. We want God to, yeah. amen, bring them to the knowledge of the truth. The Bible says, God would that all men be saved That's and right. come to the knowledge of the truth. Yeah. We want them to be able to see, okay, this is not the will of God, and to repent and get things right. Because many are also beginning to jam worldly music in the church. Yeah. And this is why I stress over and over again mm -hmm. that worldly music, secular music, is a thing of the world. Yeah. And the Bible says, amen, love not the world nor the things, amen, that are in the world. We don't want to look like the world coming in church. No. We want to dress in a holy manner, amen, let God show us, amen, how we should appear in the church. As I mentioned before, mm -hmm. I mean, you want, you want to come in looking like a Viking. I mean, amen, amen. <laughs> Just because you ain't got no hat on with horns coming out the side, don't mean you're not a Viking. Some people come in church, you're a Viking. I don't care what nobody say. Amen, it's serious stuff here because it's a spirit of paganism that's going around. Oh, yeah. And you can look at people. Yeah. They be right in church. Yeah. I mean, when women start cutting the sides of their hair off, okay, and then you go back and go through history mm -hmm. and you look at them Viking women, yeah. and you'll see they got the side of their hair tattooed up and they got skin off. They take them axes and go to me. Amen, it's serious stuff. And you're like, okay, uh, where you get that idea from? It's a pagan spirit, amen, that came in and it, it, it harassed you, man. It's harassing you. You don't realize it. <laughs> I speak the truth in love. Amen, it's a serious business because we want people to look and say, okay, what well, think is thou? This is not of God. This is not in keeping with the morals and values of the church. Amen, we, we, we try to do the right thing here. When, when you see nothing yet, Hey Amen. These guys got these big boomerang earrings in their nose and all all over their lip, and yeah. some people are actually literally cutting off all their hair, eyebrows, and all, mm -hmm. and the Amen putting bones and things in their head to shape to look like that demon that's harassing them. Yes. The image come from somewhere. It does. These images, these idols that you see, mm -hmm. it, you can't come up with it unless a spirit get in you. And give you that yeah, image. That's right. Some people call it artwork. Yeah. And some of that stuff is the money work, period. Yeah. And they're coming in and putting these images in people's hearts and minds. Yeah. And they wow. sit there and grab this clay and bricks and stuff and hook it up. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, there's that demon he been that, that he that being harassed by. He built him. Yes. Yeah. The night building he bound down to him. Yeah. It's it's, it's hilarious, but think about it. Yeah. If you consider it and look at all these idols that's all over the world, yeah. you don't just come up with these ideals. No, that's no, the no, demon no. that yeah. they are worshiping. That's right. And when you begin to go in and have somebody modify your appearance, uh -huh. I mean literally, I mean completely, turn a person into that demon. Uh -huh. I mean, you see people looking like, I mean, like a cat. Yeah. They even got some way of putting whiskers in their in their skin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then whiskers look like they literally grew out yeah. of the skin. Uh-huh. That's a problem. And demons are manifested in this way. <laughs> you get tired of being in the people, they want to manifest outside the people, and turn the people into them. <laughs> this is serious stuff here. And it's happening throughout the world. Just take a little research. You'll see it. In numbers that yes, it's just uh, wow. Yeah. And we recently saw a lady that had turned her eye completely black. Yeah. They got this ink. They just get it right under the skin of the eyes. They just press that black in there and their whole eye turned black. They get no white in the eye. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how bad it's getting. Mm -hmm. Demons are tired of, of being inside. They want to manifest outside also. Yeah. Not just in action, but also in appearance. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. Yes. When you realize these things and begin to mm -hmm. ask ourselves, okay, am I am I meeting the standard here? Mm -hmm. Am I doing what I need to be doing? Yes. Because they come in different ways, different levels of manifestation of demonic activity. Oh, yes. 
we want to be able to make sure that we get rid of all demonic activity. Yeah. As Paul said, you got to think about it, I must buffet my body and bring it under subjection. Mm -hmm. At least I find myself yeah. missing heaven. Amen. This body has to be buffeted. Yeah. It has to be brought under subjection to the Spirit of God. Yeah. Because this body don't belong, amen, to us. Let's take a look here. Mm -hmm. And one last scripture before we close it out. Amen. Romans chapter 12. Praise God. There's no intention to talk about all these things today. Mm -hmm. It's not. We've got to give it as God releases it. Because mm -hmm. all this stuff is needed. Amen. Mm -hmm. We've got to pay attention to what's going on. Because mm -hmm. demons are trying to creep out in many different ways. Oh, yeah. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, your bodies, your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable service. Reasonable service is simply what's expected of you, your body. And Satan got people presenting their body to him, sacrificing their whole body, turning into the demon by having a head, a face, everything modified. You see guys with these big old earrings on, you can see clean through their ear. Mm -hmm. In Africa, where the witches and warlocks are just running rampant all over the place, uh, you'll find these guys somehow, I mean, they got their ear distracted to the holes that, that, that big. Mm -hmm. Then they have this thing in their lip, where their lip also have a ring in there, yeah. and it comes way out there. Mm -hmm. Watching Wakanda, and I saw one of those guys. It was a TV show, but these things are happening for real. Yeah. This is real stuff. When you go into some of these, or uh, you look into documentaries on some of these uh, native lands, uh -huh. and you'll see they're doing some of the most uh, unusual stuff. Oh, yeah. I use that word to put it lightly. Mm -hmm. Unusual stuff. And you'll be like, oh, okay, then. what would make them do that? Mm -hmm. Demons. Yeah. Demonic spirits. That's speaking right. to them. Yeah. And they're here, and they go do it. Same thing, that's why we got these items coming up all over America today. For they talked about last Sunday, they got monkey heads and they got human bodies. Yeah. And they're 90 feet tall. That's huge. And they're being constructed or erected, if you will, all over the country. Because basically immigrants. I mean, we're a free nation. You can worship what you want. It's a good thing and it's a bad thing for some. Mm -hmm. But uh, they want to put up these big monstrous idols. They're allowed to do it. But they weren't able to, they were doing it before. You gotta ask yourself something. Why is it all of a sudden? Now in this season, these things are happening. Yes. And we need to be more diligent. Amen about the word. And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's what we want. That's what God wants for us to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is what He wants for us. Because He loves us. Yeah. Amen. And He wants us to be aware of what's going on in the world and to pray. Yeah. Pray diligently, pray consistently. Make it a habitual thing to bow down before him in prayer, asking him, amen, to direct us in the way he would have us to go. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and stand. Oh, we pray to close. I'm going to call up my second preacher there to go ahead and close us out. She get a couple of sips of milk. And then she closes on out. <laughs> Amen. Oh, we just thank you now for your love and kindness and your mercy, Lord. Forgive us grace once again to come into the sanctuary. Lord, help us to attend to those things that we need to attend to. And be aware of those things we need to be aware of. Them. That we may pray more effectively. Oh, Lord, we may ask for your mercy. For your tender hardness, oh God. To call them unto Jesus, that they may be saved also. We ask your mercy upon our city, O oh God. 
that everyone in the city of Jonesboro, that you would draw them unto Jesus. You know, God, they will come into the sanctuary and be delivered and set free and grow closer and closer to you. Let your will be done. And as we leave this place, oh God, let peace, grace, and favor be upon everyone here. And let the hedge of protection be built and fortified upon everyone here, oh God. Upon our families, and upon those throughout the city. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah.